What's up you guys, it's Steve here with your stimulus check update and stimulus package update. And today we saw in the Senate the final pleas to include the $15 per hour minimum wage in the stimulus package. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. We actually have video footage of Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer in the Senate making his final plea, his case, to get that included. So we're gonna be taking a look at that as well as diving into an article letting us know that this is gonna be decided here very soon. Very likely it was gonna to be today, but we're still waiting. So it's probably gonna to be tomorrow that we'll be hearing from the Senate parliamentarian on that. And we're gonna be seeing which way the stimulus package is gonna be going. So I'm gonna be giving you guys a late night update today, February the 24th, as to what unfolded in the Senate and what we'll likely see tomorrow. But before we dive right in, if you could do me a quick favor, it'll just take a second. If you like and appreciate these updates, take a second to smash the like button. I would appreciate it. It helps out the channel. Like button comments and sharing these videos out, they help out my channel. Thank you so much. And also, if you're not already part of the Ram Fam and you would like to stay up to date on everything rolling out, go ahead and join the viewing community by smashing the subscribe button and turning on that notification bell so that way as soon as I upload, you can get notified. And also, be sure to follow me as well on Instagram at steveram3. But you guys, let's go ahead and dive into this article that just came out, and then let's take a look at this video footage of what Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer had to say in the Senate today. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So for those of you guys that have been following me, you know that we've already received the stimulus bill. It's 591 pages, and in a previous video, I actually covered some of the Ways and Means Committee section provisions, including the stimulus checks, the unemployment extension, and the child tax credit. And I actually, in my next video, went into more depth specifically on the stimulus checks. So if you got questions about what's included in the bill, be sure to check that out right there. And what they're saying is, in order for us to pass this through the process of reconciliation, so that way Democrats can just push it through without any Republicans Republican support, every provision in there is okay with the exception. There's one that's in question and that is the $15 per hour minimum wage. They want to increase it federally to $15 per hour and they're saying that might not be able to be included. So today what we saw in the Senate was them make their final plea and we saw articles like this that said Senate Democrats make their final pitch to including minimum wage hike in the aid bill and it says Senate Democrats made their final pitch on Wednesday to the official who will decide whether the language to increase the minimum wage can be included in the pandemic relief bill. Staffers met with Senate Parliamentarian Elizabeth McDonough on Wednesday in accumulation of weeks of behind-the-scenes efforts by both parties to sway her as she prepares to make her decision. The Senate Parliamentarian is going to be hearing arguments today on the $15 per hour minimum wage policy included in the House's version of the bill, said Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Because Democrats are trying to pass the bill through reconciliation, the budget process that will allow them to bypass the 60-vote legislative filibuster in the Senate, it has to comply with arcane rules that determine what can be included. Now, aides indicated after Wednesday's meeting that they had not yet received a ruling, but it could come in a matter of hours, but it's looking like it's going to be slipping into tomorrow, Thursday. The Democratic pandemic bill currently includes language to increase the minimum wage to $15 per hour by the year 2025. The House is expected to vote on the $1.9 trillion proposal this Friday, and then the Senate could move as early as next week. But we're still waiting to hear from the parliamentarian. And today, we saw the final pleas in the Senate. So you guys, let's go ahead and dive right into what Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer had to say, and let's see what he said onto the floor today. Um, even now, Mr. President, even as we continue to confirm President Biden's nominees here on the floor, the Senate Democratic majority is busy working on the American Rescue Plan. The country has just suffered from a once-in-a-century event that shuttered thousands of businesses, sapped more than 10 million jobs, and according to CBO, left a $17 trillion hole in our economy. As the distribution of the vaccine finally begins to accelerate under the Biden administration, there is certainly hope on the horizon. But we're far way off from a full recovery. And it is our job, our job, to help millions of Americans, struggling Americans, through the next several months of difficulty and hasten the day when our country can finally return to normal. The American Rescue Plan is designed to do just that, keep American families and businesses and schools and workers afloat until they can get back on their feet. And there's a broad consensus that our country needs more support to get through this crisis. Mayors and governors from both parties support the plan. The Republican governor of West Virginia told Congress, we need to go big. Economists from across the political spectrum say that our economy needs further support. 
The chair of the Federal Reserve appointed by President Trump just told us that, quote, the economic recovery remains uneven and far from complete, and the path ahead is highly uncertain. Chairman Powell, hardly a raving liberal, concluded there's a long way to go. And it has broad support in America. Seven in 10 Americans approve of the American Rescue Plan. In some polls I've seen, a majority of Republicans approve of this plan, Republican voters, not Republicans here in the Senate. Now it's easy to see why there's such broad support. The COVID pandemic is the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, the worst public, public health crisis our nation has faced in 100 years. But our Republican colleagues say all these groups demanding the $1.9 trillion dollar American Rescue Plan, business leaders, government officials from both parties, economists from across the spectrum, and seven in 10 Americans. Republicans say all of them are wrong. According to a report in CNN, Republican leaders are maneuvering to get every single Republican member to oppose the emerging legislation, every single one. Make no mistake, Republicans oppose the American Rescue Plan to the detriment of the country, and they do so at their own political peril. If our Republican colleagues want to oppose direct checks to struggling families, food assistance to hungry Americans, keeping teachers, firefighters, and essential public employees on the job, providing another round of support for small business, helping schools reopen as quickly and safely as possible, speeding vaccinations around the country, well, if congressional Republicans want to oppose all that, my response is, good luck. The country needs this final push. It's overwhelmingly popular. A new analysis this morning showed another vaccine produced by a U.S. company is safe and effective, which only underscores the need for federal dollars to accelerate its distribution. It will help millions of American families survive the ongoing crisis, recuperate from the economic hardship of the past year, and set our country on a firm path to recovery. That's why Senate Democrats have made it the first legislative item on our agenda. By stark contrast, the first action item taken by Republican Senate majority when they got the majority in 2017 was an attempt to repeal our nation's health care law and rip health coverage away from millions of Americans. Republicans followed it up with a giant tax cut disproportionately aimed at big corporations and the uber rich the Democratic Senate majority is going to start on a much different note. This week, the House, and soon thereafter, the Senate, will start working on President Biden's American Rescue Plan to deliver desperately and urgently needed assistance to the American people. One final note on this topic, the minimum wage. As it has been reported widely, the Senate parliamentarian is hearing arguments today on the $15 minimum wage policy included in the House version of the bill. According to the Congressional Budget Office, raising the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour has a significant budgetary impact, which should make it permissible under the Senate's reconciliation rules. And I want to thank all of the hardworking Senate staffers, on my staff, Senator Sanders' staff, and many others, in participating in these arguments today. So there you guys have it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. So we're still waiting to hear from the Senate parliamentarian. And as soon as we do, know that I'll be sure to share here on the channel. And if she decides to keep it in, we're going to see this included in this bill. And it's likely Democrats will have to stay unified to push it through reconciliation. And the person in question, of course, is Senator Joe Manchin. Now, if she throws it out, it's very likely Democrats will stay unified, but then they'll have to figure out another way to get that $15 per hour minimum wage increase included and they're gonna have to do it through the regular process, which is getting 60 votes in the Senate, which means they're gonna have to convince 10 Republicans, which at this point seems very unlikely. They're gonna probably have to do some negotiations. But you guys, first thing is, we gotta see what the Senate parliamentarian has to say. So as soon as we hear, I'll be sure to keep you guys up to date here on the channel. And once again, if you wanna get a recap on the 591 page bill or the stimulus check provision in that bill, be sure to check out these videos right here. And also I've been uploading some videos on stocks and investing, real estate, 
estate, things like that. So that way you guys can stay up to date on that as well. So be sure to check those out. And if you made it this far and you haven't already, be sure to smash the like button. I would appreciate it. And to stay up to date on everything, if you're not already part of the Ram Fam, smash the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram as well at steveram3. Well, you guys, I hope this reaches you well. I hope you enjoyed this late night update. Take care. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow. This is Steve.